Hello, I'm Ollie and this is Criminal Ollie, where I talk about crime, pulp, horror, that kind of thing. Today I'm going to talk to you about the joys of book browsing. Uh, I'm doing the Bring Back Browsing book tag. So this is a tag that was created by Karen uh, at The Roving Reader. Um, I was tagged ages ago by Micah Cummins. So sorry, Micah, for taking so long to do this video. Um, it really is <laughs> quite falling on me, but I've got to it in the end. Um, so there are not very many prompts. There are only um, five prompts. Um, so I will whiz through those. I think this will be quite a short video, um, but I do think it's quite an interesting subject. And certainly um, browsing books um, is one of the great pleasures of life, isn't it? Even when you are on um, a Read What Your Own Challenge like I am at the moment where I'm not allowed to buy any books, there is a there is a pleasure to be had in browsing books. You just have to exercise a bit more self-control. Um, right, so the first question is, um, or the first prompt is, Magic of Discovery, share a book you found while browsing, uh, while browsing that you may have may not have discovered otherwise um, and this is a book that started a a lifelong love affair for me uh, it is the mugger by ed mcbain which i found in a charity shop in my hometown when i was i guess 13 or 14 um, it was the first mcbain book um, i read and i've subsequently read all of all of the books in the in the 87th precinct series which it is part of um, of which there are 55 as well as a load of other books by him and under the Ed McMahon name and also under other names that he wrote about. Um, so an author who has been hugely important to my um, kind of enjoyment of popular fiction um, over the years. Um, and I genuinely don't know if I would have read the books um, if I hadn't chanced upon that one in a charity shop. It used to be that they were, you know, you saw them you know, around quite a lot. But nowadays, um, you know, most of his books are physically not in print anymore you certainly don't see them in bookshops you can get them on kindle and things like that um so he's an author that's kind of just fallen out of the spotlight which i think is a terrible show because i think he's a a wonderful wonderful author and i never tire of, of saying that in videos um question two then uh, is expanding world um share a book that has made you view things from a different perspective or exposed you to new ideas so the book that i always think about when i when i get questions like this is and I'm not someone who reads a huge amount of non-fiction but I read a political book a few years ago which I think about regularly still um, and I thoroughly recommend it and that book is The Dictator's Handbook by Alastair Smith um, and Bruce Bueno de Mesquita. So this is a book um, about how to become a dictator okay it's a it's a book that that analyzes a number of kind of military coups and things like that um, where you know people have overthrown existing governments and, and taken over and it talks about both both how dictators take power and how they cling on to power so the things they have to do in order to to stay in power but then what it does which is brilliant is it is it uses all of those principles and all the things it's discussed to talk about how the structures of power work in democracies so how in you know in, even in liberal democracies it can all it's, it's often a very small number of people who actually the person who is in power needs to to influence in order to get into power and to maintain their power and it's something that you know once you've read this book trust me you will see it time and again when you're watching the news and you see political decisions that are being made by you know the president of the states or the, or the prime minister of the uk um how how these these concepts relate to what they are doing and how they are trying to keep a fairly small number of people happy because those are the people that actually keep them in power a really really fascinating book about how power works in in the modern world um okay question three then is open to change um share a book that has changed you uh, who you are as a person or altered your day-to-day -day habits so this is that there is only one example or, or one there is one example for this that is head and shoulders above every other um but it's not necessarily an easy thing for me to talk about but I, I will talk about it anyway so the book is a book called alcohol explained uh by someone called william porter um and the book is a um a book about the, the physiological effects of alcohol on the human body and how your body processes alcohol 
and how alcohol you know affects you uh, and and the in particular how your body reacts to alcohol so the things your body does once it's once it's got alcohol in its system and and how that can make you want more alcohol and and i read it as someone who knew that i was um you know was not necessarily in control of, of my drinking so you know speaking openly amongst friends you know i used to drink too much um not necessarily you know, I wasn't necessarily drinking every day or anything like that. And it, and it certainly never impacted my, you know, my work life or my family life. But I was somebody who once I'd had a drink, I had to keep on drinking. And that is very much one of the things that is described in this book. Um, so I read this book about, well, not long before I started the channel. So a year and a year and a bit ago. Um, and as of um, well, as of today, I think, uh, I've been sober for 502 days. So the book really helped me crystallise my thinking about you know, alcohol and about my own drinking uh, and helped me to, to, to find the strength to, to just stop. And I have stopped and I, I have not been happier. You know, I, I, cannot, I cannot imagine going back to, to drinking again. And certainly this channel would not exist if I was still drinking. So I would not have the the time and the headspace to make you know, make content in the way that I do if I was still drinking um, in the way I used to. So I'm, I'm very, very happily sober. Um, okay, question four then um, is browse um, a browse bookstore, library or a friend's shelf. So because I'm on this Read What You Own challenge at the moment, I don't want to put unnecessary temptation in my way. So rather than going to a bookstore or something like that, which I'm trying to avoid doing, I thought I would, I would look at... Um, Micah, who tagged me in the video, I thought I would look at his shelves on Goodreads um, to see um, what sort of books he's been reading. And, and I did that. I chose him quite deliberately as someone who I, I know we don't necessarily share the same, same taste in books. So I've had, a, I've had a good scroll through his Goodreads shelves. And, and indeed, I have discovered that I've hardly read any of the books I've, I've, uh, that he's got on his shelf. So he, so he has read a lot of classics, and in particular, a lot of Russian classics. Um, so he's read uh, like pretty much all of Dostoevsky, from, from what I can tell, and a lot of Toy Story as well. So there are a few things on there that, that I am familiar with, but I think all the things that kind of appeal to me on his shelves are things I've already read. So they are, you know, kind of the horror classics, for example, like like Frankenstein, Frankenstein and Dracula. Um, he's also read Coraline by Neil Gaiman, which I read with my um, my son a few years ago and really enjoyed. Um, the Telltale Heart by Edgar Allan Poe, which obviously is a classic. Um, but yeah, aside from that, it's it's many many classics. Um, of, of the kind that don't particularly appeal to me. I'm just continuing to scroll through now just to see if there's if there's anything else. And lots of kind of political biographies as well of, of American presidents and things like that, which again, do not, re do not really appeal to me. Um, so Micah is fantastically well read. And if you don't subscribe to his channel already um, and you, you are interested in you know, kind of classic fiction and historical non-fiction, um, I certainly recommend his channel. Um, but we do, we do, it's fair to say, have very different tasted books. Right, time for me to tag some other people to do this tag. So I'm going to tag, and this is a, this is a slightly old tag because it's taken me so long to get uh, to it. So hopefully none of these people have done this tag, but it is a, a, a fun, quick tag. So hopefully if you haven't done it, you'll give it a go. So I'm going to tag um, Anne Novella, um, Crystal at Fibre Artsy, and um, Gareth at Book Songs and Other Magic. Okay, time for a random book from the shelves. Today's book, again, <laughs> I seem to always say this, is a book I really need to get to at some point. Um, I haven't managed it yet, but it is supposed to be excellent. And I've read um, I've read one other book by this author, which I loved. So the author is Michael Chabon. The book I've read by him, which I love, was The um, Amazing Adventures of Cavalier and Clay. Um, this is The Yiddish Policeman's Union, uh, which is a, a crime novel by him. Um, I, I think he's a fantastic writer based on what I've read by him. Uh, and I love the cover of this book as well. So I definitely do, as I always say, need to get to it soon. So I hope you found that interesting. Let me know in the comments books that have changed your life. Um, let me know um, how you feel about book browsing. Let me know if there are books that, that you've discovered um, through browsing that you think you may never have come across otherwise. Um, and as always, thank you very much for watching. Hope you're safe and well out there. Hope you're reading good stuff. And I'll speak to you again very soon. Cheerio.